When you open the score for new piece, you need to make following steps. You need to mark the fingering and position change notes in the score. You need to mention notes correctly and then correctly play them with correct movements. <laughs> so this is what we're going to talk about now. Play the piece with separate hands to mark the fingering in the score. We need to have fixed fingering to later mark notes for position change. Also, fixed fingering would make practicing the piece much easier and smoothly, otherwise repeating notes with different fingering is very confusing for our muscle memory. And I know that you're not the first grade student, but please take the pencil and write down the fingering in the score and don't really overthink which fingering is better. Um, because our goal is basically just to fix the fingering that first comes to our mind, not to play the piece with different fingering every time. Circle notes where you would move your elbow to prepare a new position. Uh, it looks this way. And I will also include PDF file down below so you could take a look at the, at the, at the whole piece and analyze position change better for yourself. Finding position change notes is always a bit overwhelming in the beginning and there is no certain rules to follow. Just circle the last note before any large leap. So let's say we're playing from this G to this G, first finger to second finger. So this is a big stretch. So over here, I'll move my elbow first to the right, and my elbow would leap the rest of my hand. Um, oh, come on. Back. <laughs> um, your first finger shifting. So let's say I'm playing this part, and then I shift my hand together with my finger. So that would be one position, that would be another position. So I would move my elbow over here to the left to be in my next position already. Or stretching a hand more than a seventh, uh, depending on how much you can spread your finger without tension in the hand. So let's say for me, well, I can reach without any like additional little tension seventh. Like for eight, I would already have to you know, stretch not comfortably my, my, my hand. <laughs> so, uh, for example, here we have an octave, but instead of opening up my, my hand, I would just move my elbow to the left and then shift my whole hand. So basically this. When you have big lips, when you shift your first finger, and when you need to spread your hand more than you can reach effortlessly. And try to circle notes on downbeat, not on upbeat, that will let you feel more stable in moving elbow. Let's say you play here. Like I said, I will move my elbow over here, right? And that would be kind of downbeat, comparably if I will move my elbow on E. That wouldn't be comfortable if I play. We need to feel stable. So move your elbow on kind of down a bit. And also in this place, not really easy to play, especially if you play very fast. Um, so moving your elbow on this note is just like the key of success. in the score so um, you don't have any stiffness in your hand while playing and also if you're following my program you know you can simply contact me and I will make for you fingering and position change not a big deal and uh, later you will learn yourself how to make it it will it's gonna be like naturally somehow your hand will guide you I don't know how but the hand is probably smart also <laughs> With imaginary notes, always make the same routine. Basically, first imagine separate hands, then play them, and then imagine both hands and play them. 
And now let's talk about how and what to imagine. You can start with using a uh, timbre of violins for everything that is written from middle C up, that's for your right hand, and using cello's timbre for everything that is written from middle C down for your left hand. And later we're going to talk about imagining notes in sound texture, and this is important to remember. In the future, you can skip imagining notes in violins and cellos and go right away to sound texture imagination. My studies show that it's sometimes easier for students to imagine notes in sound texture than in violins and cellos. But for now, we're going to start with string group of instruments for the sake of better understanding of sound imagination. Now, when imagining violins and cellos, always make sure that you imagine a large group of instruments, not just a single violin or cello. The quality of imagined sound should be always soft and full. Remember, everything that we imagine or hear affects our muscles. And a single violin would give a flat and tense sensation to our muscle, and we want apparently to avoid this. To find the movement of imagined note, we need to see if it's higher or lower than the previous note. Not the next note, but the previous one. So what I mean is, uh, for example, this F is lower than G. That's why F we can imagine to the left. And um, this D is higher than B. That's why D is going to be with movement to the right. Keep the same movement uh, in the same notes. So I'm coming up to G. That's why that all next G's, <laughs> all next G, also going to be with movement to the right. A starting note can have any movement. Um, well, I basically assume that it's probably starting with movement to the right, the very first note, because so many times I would come back to the G to the right in uh, similar fragments. And pay attention to hidden voices and choose movements according to them. Let's say you have uh, this part, the left hand. So you wouldn't play just left, left, left. By the melody, by the hidden melody line here. So this way. And uh, to remind you again, when we have an interval and a chord to imagine, we're still using the same principle to imagine several notes simultaneously that we used in the retraining program. If the chord is going to the right. Start imagining notes from down up sequentially. That means you would imagine violence here, then to the right here, to the right here, to the right here, to the right. Every note is with movement to the right. And then we're going to reduce time till the chord is imagined all together. In our imagination, we would make this. clearly every note in this vertical line. If the chord is going to the left, um, okay, so this one coming down to this chord, then we start imagining notes from up to down sequentially. Every note is movement to the left and then reduce time till the chord is imagined all together. Again, in your imagination you would make this. exercises you could imagine clearly simultaneously as many voices as needed. So what we need to do now is to imagine right hand in the timbre of violence with movement and glissando between notes, then play it, then left hand with uh, movement and glissando in the cello's timbre and play it, then both hands imagine and then play it. So no, now glissando is when uh, between notes we're not just imagine Imagine. So every time you need to imagine this glissando between notes, it's important for further practicing. And again, um, 
if it's hard for you to imagine Gassando, let's say in both hands, simultaneously, for example here, you would imagine from G to F and from E to C in both hands, then just let it go, just stick with one hand and time will make it perfect. And the same thing actually with the chords, if you have problems still with imagining like three part, four part chords, uh, just let it be, uh, imagine as much as you can, but uh, just know that time will make it perfect. Uh, now there are some tips to remember. Make sure you're imagining notes with movement and glissando. In the future, if you have problems with imagining glissando, especially in small distance in seconds, yes, it's really hard. In the beginning, so you will have It's quite hard. You can internally intonate while imagining notes and that will help to feel glissando better. Uh, for those of you who already knows what intonation is, you know what I mean. For those of you who don't know, I will talk about intonation a little bit later, but basically it's um, when you uh, sing with resistance and glissando while playing. So that's why when you intonate, kind of, you know, you see, you, you have the score and you imagine notes and at the same time you internally intonate with glissando and resistance, that will help you to imagine glissando much better. Okay, um, where was I? Now, imagine all tied notes. That will help you to play the next note very smoothly. That's really important for everything. Let's say you have this part. So you have, and then, this is what is written without tie. So in your imagination, you have to imagine this first tie note. Because in this case, when you come back with glissando, then the next note will be beautifully pouring out very smoothly. Not this way, but this way. High notes is very important to imagine if you want to play really beautiful. Um, and also remember to skip any articulations. <laughs> we don't imagine articulations and they belong to singing, to intonation part, not to imagination parts. So imagine everything in a smooth legato. Uh, if you have staccato, please do not imagine dun, 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 in your mind. Still imagining it's the Sunday. Mm, between notes. And uh, if it's hard for you to imagine notes, again, there is my video titled How to Mentally Practice Piano. Uh, that video might help you. While playing, I suggest to add intonation and weight as soon as possible. You will notice how much pleasant it is to play with intonation when your hands are more relaxed and soft. But to start, you can separate imagination and intonation and play first with only sound imagination watching your wrist and elbow movements. That separation will help to better focus on imagination and movement. Um, so, I mean, who knows what intonation and weight they know how much um, freedom it brings to your hands comparably with playing without any singing, without any freedom in your body. So. Um, yes, you can first imagine both hands and play them without intonation and weight, just to focus on which movements you make with your wrist, elbow, how you imagine everything correctly. And then right away, the very next time you play, I suggest you to use intonation and weight, otherwise you will feel uncomfortable without playing with intonation and weight for too long. Uh, before playing, Make sure you sit high enough when your elbows are not lower than your hand. Hopefully by that time you already know all of this. So make sure your elbow at least at the same level, not this way. Make sure your wrist is not too high or too low. That's also very dangerous. Don't play like this. Don't play like this. Keep your wrist kind of on the beautiful natural level this way.
make sure your hands are completely relaxed, light, weak, like further on the keys, touching them for the first time. If no sound comes up, that's a good sign you're doing everything right. Everything you play in the beginning, please play in piano or better pianissimo. Never play any forte because you haven't imagined it yet. It will be nice. Um, what I mean is that if you think that this is relaxed hands, tense hands. So what I mean by relaxed hand is when you, let's say, you recovered after long sickness, you come back to the piano, remember how you touch the keys, you touch like you have no power, no energy, so like nothing. And I'm not actually exaggerating, okay, if I'm just playing the very first time. It will be like this. See my sound? It's very weak. shape of the hand and fingers are correct but that's what I mean and if sometimes you press the key and there is no sound that's the best sign that you write like this so go that direction the sound will come <clears throat> oh god I need to mark <laughs> uh, where I was where was I yeah, so our hands are just empty hoses to let energy flow to the keyboard. Um, what I mean is that we used to think that to play musically we need to tense more and do some more movements with our hands, which is actually not true because every music is over here and it, it's um, manifested through this instrument. So our hands are just the bridge and more empty and free they are, better energy will go if there's any tension. Anything you imagine will stuck over here, will never reach your piano. So hands just uh, transfer our energy to the instrument. While playing, imagine note first, then touch the key. Please do this. So imagine note, you touch the key. You imagine next note, you touch the key. Please remember that during the whole practicing on the very first stage we need to play everything in a very slow tempo, out of time, even embellishments. Not only you need to play very soft, but also like everything is written with whole notes. You don't have to prove anyone that you can count one and two and three. So just like this. Everything was the same note value. Really. Uh, play notes that are going in the same direction with one hand stroke. Okay, let's say you play in this part. Every note to the left. So when you play, don't uh, come, don't make this movement with your wrist. Because you would imagine also on one movement. So everything on one movement. Make sure that in contrary motion pattern, you imagine sound and move your wrist till the end of every note and then you come back. Meaning that we have contrary motion here, right, left, right, left. The most common mistake I made in my time and my students made as well, is that uh, instead of moving your wrist till the end to the right and then move your wrist till the end to the left, uh, students would make somehow this student would, wouldn't make this tail of the note, they would just move the wrist right away to the direction of the new note. So it would basically look like this, instead of this. See? E higher, wrist to the right. C lower, wrist to the left. Not that way. So, I hope it's clear. <laughs> Make wrist and elbow movement as big and vivid uh, as possible. Uh, later they will be smaller and will be remained just in small movements of muscles. So if I play, um, for example, here, uh, let's say I'm playing the first time and I'm making wrist and elbow movement. So if you do something like this, you're not doing anything. If you do something like this, and then the elbow comes, and 
Add intonation and weight right after playing uh, first couple of times. That's what I mentioned above. The first time you play, imagining, watching wrist elbow movement, the very next time, please add intonation and weight. You don't have to imagine any intonation prior playing. It's as easy as this. You gather weight, that free energy in your body, and start playing internally singing every interval with glissando and resistance. You would feel some sort of buzzing sensation in your throat, some vibrations while playing this way. And we're still playing in slow tempo, but don't play too slow because that will freeze natural flow of your weight.